again, welcome to the Mount Rushmore Lighting Ceremony. The men on Mount Rushmore stand for many things. One of them is courage. Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States, had an extraordinary relationship with Booker T. Washington, the African-American educator. They would survive an incredible crucible together. Roosevelt invites Washington to dine at the White House, an extraordinary event because it had not happened before. They would face near ruin in their careers and also face assassination attempts. But they would persevere through this and continue to work together to try and bring good people to office and more justice and equality into our political system. Washington is born in 1856 in Franklin County, Virginia, to slavery. Upon emancipation, he and his family move to West Virginia, where he works alongside a stepfather in the salt mines. But all through that time, Washington yearns to learn how to read. And with the help of his mother and, and an African-American teacher, he does learn to read. But his life is transformed when he is 15, and he overhears mention of the Hampton Institute, a school specifically created to help educate African Americans. He, he finds the courage and, and money to, 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 to make the 400 mile journey back to Virginia to present himself at Hampton. In, in order to, to, to counteract his bedraggled existence there, he's his innate industrialism comes into use and he cleans one of the school's recitation rooms, therefore winning for himself admission, a job, and his tuition being deferred. The year was 1923. The place, the Black Hills of South Dakota. State historian Don Robinson proposed that these granite outcroppings could be the site of an enormous monument dedicated to the heroes of the West such as Lewis and Clark and Chief Red Cloud. But commissioned sculptor Gutzon Borglum had a different concept in mind. Borglum was a passionately patriotic man and believed that a more fitting tribute should honor the American experience. A memorial that would represent our ideals, our dreams, and our accomplishments as a country. A memorial that would convey a spirit of patriotism. Borglum chose his canvas carefully, the giant granite rock face of Mount Rushmore. And in 1927, work on the mountain began. It began as an uprising against British rule and turned into a full-fledged crusade for personal freedom and national independence. The American Revolution. From 1775 to 1783, up to 250,000 patriots engaged in battle. Even during the toughest times, when the Continental Army seemed undisciplined and ill-equipped, one man's courage and determination ultimately led the troops to victory over the British. The future father of our country, George Washington. Born and raised in colonial Virginia, George Washington grew up to be a firm believer in American independence. Even though his heart yearned for quiet family life at his Mount Vernon home, his deep commitment to the Republic made him answer the call of his country time and time again. As general, Washington became an instant hero throughout the colonies. The public was so enamored with him that many people wished that he become king. But Washington scoffed at such an idea. 
The army must serve the country, but not rule it. Express your utmost horror and detestation of the man who wishes to overturn the liberties of our country. George Washington, 1783. It was this kind of insight and integrity that made him the perfect person to oversee the creation of a new federal government. With no blueprint to follow, Washington kept the colonies united and on course during the infant years of this nation. And after ratification of the Constitution, when he was unanimously elected first president of the United States, Washington was keenly aware that he was laying down the framework for future presidents to follow. Washington's legacy is that of a man who was first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen. George Washington welded this union, but it would take another great visionary to expand it. Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson, 1776. Thomas Jefferson was the voice of the American people, inspiring patriots with his carefully crafted words written in the Declaration of Independence, the document that gave birth to our nation. It was also Jefferson who fought for religious freedom and the democratic notion that people should have a say in government, two very American principles we cherish today. Thomas Jefferson always thought of himself more as a scientist or scholar than as a politician. And it was this quest for knowledge that played a role in the greatest achievement of his presidency. In 1803, Jefferson acquired the French lands west of the Mississippi and the Louisiana Purchase, which doubled the size of the country. In an effort to find out what America now owned, Jefferson sent Meriwether Lewis and William Clark on their famous expedition out west. It was an exciting time of discovery for new Americans. However, what was good for a growing nation was not necessarily good for its original inhabitants. During this time of expansion, Many Native Americans were uprooted from their homes and hunting grounds and pushed farther west. But during an address to a group of Cherokee chiefs, Jefferson prophesied about future relations between natives and new settlers. I shall rejoice to see the day when the red men, our neighbors, become truly one people with us, enjoying all the rights and privileges we do, and living in peace and plenty as we do without anyone to make them afraid, to injure their persons or to take their property without being punished for it according to fixed laws. Thomas Jefferson, 1808. Jefferson's dream was slow to be realized as conflicts between the U.S. government and Native Americans set off a chain of events that dramatically reduced Native populations throughout the 19th century. Thomas Jefferson believed in the promise of America and had faith in the American people. But this faith would truly be tested nearly 60 years later, when the Republic came dangerously close to unraveling. The Civil War was the most tumultuous period in American history. The differences between the states had deeply divided a nation, pitting brother against brother on American soil. But it was the determination of one man to keep the United States united. Abraham Lincoln, 
are 16 president. Abraham Lincoln was a self-made man of great character, a frontiersman who came from humble beginnings. When Lincoln was inaugurated in 1861, he faced more adversity than any other president in U.S. history. Many southern states had withdrawn from the Union. And even though Lincoln opposed war, he warned the South in his inaugural address that he would take whatever measures necessary to stop the rebellion. In your hands, my dissatisfied fellow countrymen, and not in mine, is the momentous issue of civil war. The government will not assail you. You have no oath registered in heaven to destroy the government, while I shall have the most solemn one to preserve, protect, and defend it. Abraham Lincoln, 1861. The Civil War raged on for four brutal years. But Lincoln stuck to his commitment to democracy. His main objective was to save the Union, and he also strongly believed in freedom for all Americans. Until slavery was abolished, Lincoln felt the U.S. could never truly be the hope of the free. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation began the process that ended the evils of slavery forever. Over half a million Union and Confederate soldiers lost their lives in the Civil War. But during his famous Gettysburg Address, Lincoln reminded the American people what this war was really all about. That we here highly resolve that these dead should not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that this government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln, 1863. It was clear that this new century, which burst with hope, needed a fresh start and a fresh approach. It was Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president, who led the way. Is America a weakling to shrink from the work of the great world powers? No! The young giant of the West stands on a continent and clasps the crest of an ocean in either hand. Our nation, glorious in youth and strength, looks into the future with eager eyes and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. Theodore Roosevelt, 1897. He was energetic, he was robust, and he was eager to show the world that America was a force to be reckoned with. Theodore Roosevelt believed in the strenuous life. Frail and sickly as a young boy, he overcame his illnesses and grew up to be a naturalist, a cowboy, a war hero, an author, and president of the United States by the young age of 42. His vigorous outlook on life transferred to the Oval Office. Roosevelt was a man of action. He promoted economic freedom and was a friend to the working class protecting their rights against big business and what he called the criminal rich. Roosevelt also expanded the country's power abroad. It was his support of the 1903 revolution in Panama that led the U.S. to acquire territory for the construction of the Panama Canal. This massive undertaking not only created a valuable link between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, but it put the United States on the map in world politics. Yet, Roosevelt may be known best for his passion for the outdoors. He was vocal about conservation, and through the power of his presidency, he provided federal protection for almost 230 million acres of land. To waste, to destroy our natural resources, to skin and exhaust the land instead of using it so as to increase its usefulness 
will result in undermining in the days of our children the very prosperity which we ought by right to hand down to them at the Bide and Theodore Roosevelt, 1907. The pursuit of the American dream did not end with Theodore Roosevelt's term. Instead, it has carried us into the 21st century. Four Americans representing the birth, growth, preservation, and development of this country. All embodying the spirit of our nation. All advocates of freedom, dignity, and the ideals of American life. Right, right, right.